All right, today I will talk about charging price. Yes. So actually, um, Circle K, they invited me over to have a meeting with them and uh, they wanted uh, my opinion about uh, charging prices. Yeah, because you know, uh, Circle K, they started rolling out uh, charging stations and that's a good thing actually, I like it, yeah. More uh, gas stations should do that. Um, and they just want to know uh, how they should price it uh, to be fair, but also, you know, not too cheap, not too high or something. Yeah. So in this video, I will go walk through uh, the, the advantages, the challenges you have by different pricing models. So, you know, you want to make it fair for everyone, but you also want to make it uh, simple, not over complex. So you will see some examples about that one. So uh, let me take the first price model that we have, which is based on kilowatt hours. It's very common. Um, and the good thing about the, the kilowatt hour base is that it's really fair, you know? You charge the whatever amount and then you pay for it, just like you buy fuel, right? Or other things. Uh, and it's also really easy for at least experienced people to understand kilowatt hours, yes. Um, uh, and also, it's not dependent on that the car has to be warm, I mean, the battery has to be warm. So even if you arrive with a cold battery, or if you have to charge your high state of charge, uh, it goes a little bit slow towards the end, it still doesn't cost you a fortune, you know? Um, and it's also really easy to measure by the charge point operator, just n number of kilowatt hours delivered, that's it. But there are some disadvantages because um, you have slow s charging cars um, that could hog the charger. And you know, a charging, uh, especially a fast charger is a very, very good resource that you don't want people to hog it uh, if other people are waiting for it. Uh, and it, it could also be a little bit confusing for beginners because some people, they seem to mix up kilowatt and kilowatt hours. <laughs> yeah, uh, and also another problem is that, okay, this is the case for AC charging where you can, in many cars, you can uh, adjust how fast you can charge. Then you could actually abuse this if you connect it to a 22 kilowatt uh, and you only pull three kilowatt for a long time, you know, then technically you are charging there. They could be using it as a parking spot or whatever, you know, overnight. So. Yeah, it could be uh, hogged, but I will also come back to that one, yeah. But okay, the next price model is uh, based on time. So uh, that one is also really easy to understand. Everyone knows about how time works. So even if they don't know about uh, kilowatt versus kilowatt hours, uh, and it is again, very easy to measure by the chart point operator. Uh, and also it prevents hogging, yeah, because you have to pay based on time. Uh, but it might be unfair based on some models. So for example, that high power charger, you know those uh, those 150 kilowatt fast chargers. Then uh, a Kona will only get 75 kilowatts, whereas e-tron can can slurp in 150 kilowatts. So it's unfair for the Kona versus the e-tron if they have to pay based on minute. Uh, I will also show you some examples about that one. Um, and then it's also a bit unfair for cars that charges slow, uh, like a rapid gating leaf. Uh, an e-golf with a cold battery, a Tesla that for some reason needs to charge 100%, yeah. Um, okay, uh, next price model is uh, a monthly fee, uh, and then you can just charge as much as you like. So uh, we have, I think, uh, Clever and B in Denmark and Sweden, they have that one. So you, you just pay for the subscription and then charge as much as you like, yeah. Uh, so that is good because it's really predictable for the owner how much it will cost. Uh, it's also good for high volume customers, people who charge a lot. Uh, and it's also really easy to measure by the charge point operator to just bill people a fixed amount. But the problem is that uh, it will encourage hogging of charges. So people, they're gonna just stay there as long as they like, it doesn't matter, yeah. Uh, and also it's a disadvantage for people who don't charge that much like me. I occasionally go to Denmark to charge, but actually I avoid be clever because they're so damn expensive, but still. And also another problem is that um, you're kind of tied up to one operator, you know? For example, uh, in Denmark, you have you have Eon and you have B, uh, I mean, Clever, yeah. And then if you have a subscription in Clever, then you kind of tied up to that one rather than using um, the Eon also. So that is not good for, um, for competition. Yeah, you should be free about what you should choose. 
Okay, and then we have another uh, price model, which is a fixed price per charging session. That one we have, um, Eon uses it in Sweden. It will cost 50 sec, or it's 50 Swedish krona for one charging session. Uh, Ionity also uses it, eight euros per charging session. Um, so it's good for cars with large batteries, like a Tesla or an e-tron. Uh, and it's also really easy to understand that price model, yeah. Uh, and it's also easy to measure and just yeah, one time, done. Uh, but the problem is that anyone can stop that charging session. So I think that one is not a big problem yet, but it could be a problem one day. Yeah. Um, and also, it encourages people to hog the chargers. I've seen it. I've seen e so I mean, e Nero hog the charger, charge it to 95%. Uh, I've seen e-golf charge to 100%. So that is niche good. And again, it's not a problem today because we don't have too many people using the Ionity chargers, but eventually one day it could be a problem. Uh, and also it's not very profitable for cars with a small battery like this one. You know, I'm sitting in, um, in an Ionic and it's really, it's really good for Ionic to stop at Ionity charger. Um, yeah, I, I, ironically, yeah. <laughs> uh, and also, if you just need to top up for, for 10 minutes or five minutes, then it's also not good because you pay that big price. You know, it would be better if you could just pay per minute then, yeah. Uh, and again, another problem is that it's bad if the charging stops. We've seen that with the Model 3 way too many times. If it stops, then you basically lose the money and then you have to start again and pay once more, yeah. Okay, um, and then uh, let me talk about the challenges with high power charger. So, um, you know, um, when you have those 50 kilowatt fast chargers, um, <clears throat> Most cars, they charge about the same speed. So that's why time-based there, it's it's mostly fair. But the problem starts when you have high power chargers because uh, a Kona can maximum uh, get 75 kilowatt, whereas um, e-tron gets 150, yeah. And then you even have a Tesla or, a, yeah, a Tesla can get uh, almost 200 kilowatts. So how do you make it fair, you know? And based on price, it won't be fair, yeah. And then if you base it on kilowatt hours, then uh, that one is more fair, but then it's not optimal because you will have people hogging the stall, you know, and especially the high power charger is uh, a very valuable resource that you don't want people to hog. And also, I, I would say that, you know, you also have some cases where you have cars, the old cars, with, with uh, they cannot support faster than 50 kilowatt anyway, let's say an i3. Uh, they tend to hog the high power charger from time to time. Uh, and so they should be discouraged to do that. And I believe that you should price the high power charger higher than the regular 50 kilowatts. So let me take some examples about uh, today's pricing with uh, Fortum and Gun Contact in Norway. So uh, for Fortum's 50 kilowatt fast chargers, you pay 2.75 nook per minute. And if you do the math based on 45 kilowatt average speed in a charging session, you see that it costs 3.7 nook per minute, uh, sorry, for per, per kilowatt hour. So that's a fair price, yeah. And then you see that uh, for Fortum's uh, high power chargers, they take five nook per minute. Uh, immediately it sounds like a lot, but when you do the math based on the various cars, you see that for Kona, it's not that much more expensive and it charges faster, so time is also valuable. And then for e-tron, it's a bargain. It's so cheap for e-tron because it charges so fast. And then let's take a look at the Grand Contax price model. And that one is really complex, but it's actually more fair. So they take 2.5 nook per minute, and then they take another 2.9 nook per kilowatt hours. And then we have to do some uh, math here to understand how it works. And you see that for Kona, it's somewhat expensive. And then for e-tron, uh, it's uh, slightly better. But you see that the uh, Geron Contact is more expensive than, than Fortum when it comes to the high power charger. Yeah, but the problem with Fortum is that it's really unfair for e-tron versus Kona. So um, uh, how should we price it then to make it fair? Well, I believe that uh, for high power charger, it should be a two component price. So meaning a time plus kilowatt hours, but we should try to make the time component low. Um, and also um, the example with Grand Contact is really confusing because you have fractions. So I, I suggest that you use integers only in the price to make it as simple as possible. So. Uh, 
I will actually suggest that um, the price on high power charger in Norway should be one nook per uh, minute plus four nook per kilowatt hours. So if we do the math with Kona, you will see that uh, it will cost 4.8 nook per kilowatt hour. Fair enough. And then e-tron is slightly cheaper with 4.4 nook per kilowatt hour. But you see, they're, they're so close that I think uh, Kona users won't, won't, um, won't be, uh, won't uh, cry to fort them or whatever, you know. Um, and then uh, the good thing here is that if you charge it slow, if you want to go, uh, I don't know, a uh, high state of charge or if you have a cold battery, then you have to take the penalty. So it will cost more. Yeah. And then if you go even uh, slower, then it will cost even more. So this will uh, discourage people from hogging the stall or hogging the charger. So, yeah. And uh, what about the 50 kilowatt fast chargers? Because they will still exist for a long time. Yeah. Uh, again, like I mentioned, the most cars they they charge at around 40 to 45 kilowatt. So, in that regard, I would say that time uh, component is the best here. Just just make it time based, like it is today uh, already. Uh, and that one will already discourage hogging. And it's really easy for people to understand time. So go for time. It works. And then what about uh, 11 to 22 kilowatt AC charging? It's not fast charging anymore. It's They call it semi-fast semi, semi -fast charging or whatever. Uh, then, you know, it depends on the car's onboard charger, unfortunately. Not many cars can charge at 22 kilowatt. Most cars, they will charge at only 7.4 kilowatt. Um, but I also have to consider that um, you know, hogging on these uh, AC stalls is usually not a problem. Uh, most of the time, uh, people will be fighting over the DC uh, fast chargers. So I would say that um, uh, we can actually pr price it based per uh, based on kilowatt hours. Yeah, it's a no big deal. Um, and of course, if there's a place where some people abuse it, then they can add the time component to it. Or they can have a time limit, the maximum three hours there, whatever, if it's a shopping mall or whatever. So there's ways to solve this. But I think just keep it simple, keep it based on kilowatt hours, and we should be good. Yeah. And then what about even slower charging? So uh, 3.7 to 7.4 kilowatt AC charging. Um, for those, uh, you know, most cars, they already have a 6.6 to 7.4 kilowatt onboard charger nowadays. So uh, most cars, they'll be able to utilize all the available power there. So I actually think that uh, we can um, we can use time component here. Yeah, just based on time, you don't have to count even in minutes. We can count per hour. Yeah, let's say uh, one euro per hour or whatever, something like that. You know, it's way easier for, for customers to understand the time rather than kilowatt hour because then they have to know how fast it charges and all that stuff. Uh, and because it charges so slow, so then I think um, hogging, or, or I mean, people sh shouldn't be able to abuse it because you already charge for fairly slow. So yeah, and also the hardware there should be fairly cheap. So most places they have lots of these stalls anyway. So yeah. So I think that's it, yeah. So um, I don't know what you guys think. Um, my opinions, by the way, is based on many, many years of uh, driving and charging, uh, uh, at least five years. Oh, how many years now? Yeah, some almost six years of uh, driving electric, yeah. Fast charging, slow charging, all that stuff. Uh, so I've seen most of it. Um, so do you think this is fair, you know, my my suggestions? Or do you think it's too high price? Do you think it's unfair? Or do you think it's too complex? Because you might keep in mind that, you know, fast charging uh, is way more expensive than uh, slow charging at your home. You know, you might look at your your uh, electricity bill at home and you think, oh, this is this is how how cheap it should be. So why the heck are these charging companies charging so much? Well, it's because they have to pay a lot for the hardware and for the installation of the fast chargers. If you try to order a, a high power charger, a 150 kilowatt fast charger to your home, then you will see how expensive it is. Yeah, so. Um, Anyway, um, I think that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.